Kitchen. The van out for its first shakedown cruise, and one of the uh, we had just temporarily put this curtain up, just with a stretchy uh, curtain rod, uh, in order to get out. The van is not complete, but we needed to go uh, take a trip for a week to visit my son. So. Uh, while we were out, we, it became apparent that we needed some mosquito netting, and so we just really just draped some mosquito netting over top of this um, flexible rod, and uh, it worked reasonably well, but you can see there's a big gap on the top, and it didn't seal down the sides. We had ordered a screen uh, with a magnetic closure, but of course it didn't come in until after we were gone. So now we're trying to figure out how we're going to finish off some of these areas. The, um, the header, we're, we want some uh, a valance lighting here. We've got this B pillar that isn't finished. And we've got this new screen that I'm going to uh, try to figure out how to install. So I'll show you uh, just holding up the screen what it might look like. So I'll just take down this uh, curtain and screen and then I'll come right back. So this is just one of those $40 magnetic screen doors that you can buy on Amazon. Uh, this one, I'll see if I can get a picture of the tag here. Uh, this one in particular has two magnetic closures, um, one down each side, and we've got a lot of extra material at that end, but we've, uh, we're kind of positioning it so that um, it will just cover on this side and then the magnetic closure at that side will be close to the door handle so we can open it and close it. Not quite sure how we're going to permanently install it. Right now it's just held up by a few tabs of Velcro. Um, ideally they've given you enough Velcro to go around all uh, three sides. Um, but up top I'll probably put the Velcro and then attach it to the bolts that are holding the track for the top part of the sliding door back there. Uh, but I do have uh, we are unfinished at this point. There will be a light balance across here and something going down the B pillar. So I'm looking at what I can make uh, to cover that B pillar up uh, that I can also attach the, uh, the screen door to and make it so that that center section can be rolled up and fastened at the top so that it makes it easier to, uh, to come and go when you've got stuff in your hands like groceries or trying to load up the van. So that's what's happening right now. We're going to figure out how to cover up the B pillar and how to fasten the light balance and ultimately the screen door. This is the opposite side, the B pillar on the opposite side of the van. I've already made this piece of wood um, that will eventually be covered in fabric. It has some depth to it. So at the top, it's kind of flush with the headliner, but then it opens up so that uh, I can then extend that, um, extend that wood down the rest of the B pillar here. So I'm gonna have to do something similar on this side, although it's a lot more complicated shape uh, because of the way the, uh, the sliding door hinge um, rolls, rolls inside there and locks. As I said, this uh, screen door right now is just held up by a few of these little tabs. So if I just pull it out of the way, you can get an idea of the shape that needs to be filled. Um, in addition to the curve this way, um, the headliner is back from this surface. So as we start down lower, I can imagine a piece of, whoops, let me pull the rest of this out of here. I can imagine a piece of, of material, of wood, covered in fabric here and this is just a slight angle um, if it's attached to this and touching this piece of plastic um, that's quite reasonable but as you get up higher it starts to pull away and that's why the other piece had some depth to it I'm gonna have to do something similar over here so I've started this with uh, by just tracing out the, uh, the piece that I had on that side onto another piece of wood. Uh, so I've probably got a similar curve here, but of course all of this extra wood's going to get in my way. So I'm going to uh, see what I can do to mark out some of that and it'll just be a matter of mark it, cut it, mark it, cut it, mark it, cut it, see how close we can get. 
the initial piece that I started with was way off in shape, uh, so I had to start again. Uh, this is uh, probably 10 refits back and forth, back and forth. I have added some thickness to it uh, to fill in the gap coming back here. Um, I'll pull this out and I'll show you what I did to, to give it that thickness. Uh, the piece of wood will continue down um, to the bottom there as well, but we haven't quite figured out uh, how wide that's going to be yet. So I just took an inch and a half piece of uh, plywood and made a bunch of uh, cuts in it uh, to, to allow it to curve. When I traced the curve off of the um, off the front here. I had my piece in front of this and I traced that, but then I had to offset by the thickness of the pencil and this extra kind of quarter inch thickness here. And it fits reasonably well. There's some flex in this, so I'll be able to pull it against the, the little bit of a gap that's there on the one side. We're continuing to work on this B-pillar cover. Uh, we've made this piece that has the curve and some extra thickness to follow the headliner. We need to cover the rest of this and we'll figure out a way of joining them together. So I just cut this piece of wood eight inches wide and I stood it up on top of the, uh, the little step here. I moved it until it was touching at the corner here. And then I took this block of wood and I just followed the shape and scribed a line all the way down. Um, I did have some extra help, so that's why there's a line on here now. Why was it eight, eight inches wide? Oh, uh, well, it's got to cover the, uh, the flare out here at the bottom. Um, so I measured how big this piece needs to be. And the three inches was based on how far out it is at the bottom here when it's standing, when it's standing square on this piece of aluminum. This was my, uh, my three inch mark there. So I'm just going to roughly cut this line out and see how close we are. We're going to describe the outside curve first and then we can hold it in place and we can just use a pencil <coughs> to follow this inside curve. On. I just did a quick uh, freehand cut on the table saw trying to follow my pencil line just so I can bring it in and see how close I am. I've actually got probably three quarters of a half to three quarters of an inch here that I have to take off. So I'm going to use this larger washer and I'll just run my pencil down. Uh, the hard part is trying to make sure the wood doesn't move while you're doing it. So that came off at the end, so I'll get close with that line. I may have to do it again. So. Be right. Oh, uh, it's not bad. There's still a quarter of an inch down here. I'll use my smaller, my smaller washer, and see if I can get it uh, closer. I have to also watch that I'm not getting too close. I got lots of room at the back here. Hold it there. I might get a clamp. Is there something to clamp to? Yeah, I'm just going to grab a clamp. Want me to just push? Um, yeah, maybe just put that. If you can just hold it right there with your fingers. Oh. That'll be good. I've left my line. I, I just I've been cutting it uh, freehand on the table saw, and I've been leaving my line. So my line's still here, and it looks like if I sand down to my line, I'll have a good fit there. So I will do that next. No, man. 
we passed a big milestone this uh, this week. We uh, finally officially got the van registered as an RV. Up until now, it was registered as a commercial vehicle. So here in BC, uh, you have to do a, a few things. You have to get the vehicle weighed. You have to get a, a vehicle inspection done, and then. Um, you have to take it to the uh, ICBC agent and they have to come in and cite that you've got um, cooking facilities that are permanent, a bed that's permanent, a, a toilet that can't be removed without tools. You need five of ten things, uh, sorry, three of five things, and we had all five. I think it was the toilet, the fridge, the cooking facilities, a heating system, a water system, and the bed. So we're now officially an RV. Yay! That looks pretty good. In woodworking, you never actually want to take your line right off because then you lose reference as to far, how far you are. So I tried to uh, come to the line without going past it. So it does appear like a little bit of a dark line right here. And because this piece is sitting on an angle, it's actually going to sit on more of an angle than I've got it on. I'm going to have to go back and sand, sand the back off a bit a bit. I'll do that one more time. So that looks pretty good. I'm still hitting, because I'm hitting the chair, I'm not pushing back as far as it will end up going. Do you need to the, move the chair? Um, I'd have to partially swivel it. Um, I think I'll be close enough for my first, my first pass, and then it won't hit the chair anymore. Yeah, but are you going to be able to describe there with the back know. of the chair there? I don't know. Yeah, for the first pass. For the first pass. Another big milestone we're going to hit this weekend is um, we might hit a hundred subscribers, which <laughs> officially means there are more people watching than I have family members. So mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So, I won't get close to this pencil line. Uh, this is just for reference, just to get me past the uh, past the chair here. Mm -hmm. First kick of the can. I'm chewing an Oreo cookie, so now I can't talk. I think I might have to take this piece off for a second because it's keeping me out further than I will be. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Or you could just cut it shorter. Well, I don't oh. know how I'm going to connect the two together yet. Mm or where I'm going to connect them together. That's why I've left this leg here. Mm -hmm. It might help me to glue it all together. Mm -hmm. there. So now we can push that right against that piece of plastic. Get a feel for it. Do you need me to do that? At the top, it still pushes, it's still away because it, uh, you know, it, it's the plastic that moves away from me. So I'm just going to uh, give myself some room here. thinking that I'm going to actually be flush to this piece of plastic uh, because A, it, it waves a bit and it moves a bit with pressure. So I think I'm just going to stay past it and I'll just wrap the fabric right around and let it uh, touch the fabric. But it seems to be getting there.
that, we'll see what uh, I'm going to join the two pieces together. What are you thinking? I don't know. This um, <laughs> this actually lines up right right here nicely. This back piece does flare out a bit. Um, I could shave that. I could mark this line and use that as the joint line. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting kind of where I want to be. The pencil's not very sharp, so I'm actually pencil width down from that mark, but that's probably not terrible. And not terrible is the standard that we're going for. Right. So we've got the uh, first piece back in place, it's tied up against the ceiling. Um, this piece is going to come over top, so I'm going to cut this part of the wood out, and then I've got this plywood that uh, is the thickening piece that I use there that'll help me join the two together. I drew a line, but my pencil wasn't very sharp, so I'm just gonna scribe a line with this knife. So that'll show me where I wanna cut this to take this piece off. So I'll do that next. Ooh, look at that. The question is, is it all in the same plane? It goes up here, no it's not. Hmm. Yeah, it's pulled me out about half an inch. So it, it might be hitting back up in here, which is not surprising, the way that sits. Hmm. But it might also be hitting this piece of... Uh, it's probably... Is it in too far or further than it would have been with that longer piece on? Now that you've taken a no, piece I, off? It's on a bit of a different angle now. So it's uh. not following me perfectly here. Uh. Um, it's not terrible, and I probably can live with it. Uh, yeah, and once you once put it's glued, fa fabric on it, and it's. Yeah. I just have to make sure that it's somehow fastened so that it can't pivot like that. But, and in reality, this wants to be tight against that piece of metal. Oh, right? and that so one that doesn't. Put, so that I can put some rib nuts and through yes. bolts through. And this one's not right now. So maybe I have to figure out why that's not. Okay. So what are you working on? Well, there's a little hole in here that's created by the, the uh, plastic kind of pulling towards the front of the car. And I wanted to fill, fill that hole so that when I wrap this with fabric, it has something behind it. Mm -hmm. So I've created this little wedge and it looks pretty good. I might just sand sand it on a bit of an angle, take a bit of this front edge off of it. But other than that, it'll help glue these, give uh -huh. me some gluing surface to hold this all together. Uh -huh. So it actually looks pretty good. So This is our piece that was glued up overnight. Um, we've got the two uh, upper and lower pieces glued together. They're held in by this uh, original piece that formed the curve and then this extra little fillet that was needed. This will be the first time just to see if it'll actually fit. Oh wow. Well, that's surprising. That's not bad. A little bit of sanding here. That's um, really, really good. Not quite enough light in here to see all of that. Because nothing is ever easy. 
<laughs> we're having to work on a couple things at the same time. Uh, this B pillar is our main project, uh, but it kind of diverted us into this um, curtain. This curtain is held in by this upper panel. It will roll up um, and be held in, by some straps in this area here. The bottom edge um, is hanging away from the door because it's uh, doors on an angle. So we want to put something at the bottom that we can fasten the bottom of the curtain to the door. One idea was some snaps. Uh, the other idea is we found this uh, magnetic flexible strip that came with our robot vacuum. You're supposed to put it across doorways to keep the ro robot magnet, uh, the robot from going into rooms, uh, but it's magnetic and it's flexible. So we think we can sew it into the bottom of the curtain and use it to help hold the body. It'll help weigh the curtain down, but it might have enough magnet to, uh, to hold it against the, the uh, metal door. We've been working on the B pillar this morning. We've got this one ready for fabric. And when we were figuring out how to attach it to the metal part of the B pillar, we decided to use some riv nuts. And in that discussion, we decided that a handrail might be nice. So we've made a quick little handrail out of some 80-20. And this is Monique's first attempt using it coming into the van. Oh yeah, that'll be great. <laughs> Took us most of the weekend to get the B pillar cover uh, completed. It's uh, covered in fabric. In uh, the middle of the process, we decided to add this hand hold. Um, it's held on by the uh, riv nuts that were just fastening the uh, the B pillar cover in place. While we were doing it, we added a 12 volt socket up here and a switch that will control an LED light that's up in here right now. This is a, a work light that's lighting the area. I just haven't hooked up the, uh, the power at the other end. But the B pillar is uh, virtually complete. The wire runs up in behind there and up to the, uh, the 12 volt plug and then to the switch. We got really lucky. Um, when we put this handle in, we used some pre-existing holes that used to hold the uh, bulkhead in place, just made them larger. But um, when I closed the when I closed the door, the handle misses. Whoops! The handle misses hitting this uh, new handle by I don't know a quarter of an inch. Of course, the, the screen, the whole idea was to come up with a way of holding the screen on. Uh, so we've still got that to do, but I think this will be the end of this video for now. Like I say, the handle sneaks in just perfectly behind that. It opens.